In a world where SATA-6 is the bottleneck, one SSD was made to plug directly into the PCIe bus. That SSD is the Plextor M6E. So this is a PCI Express SSD. What does that mean? Well, this is the Plextor M6E. It is advertised as a PCI Express SSD, but what that means in reality is it's the new M.2 format SSD, but on a PCI Express carrier. So when you buy this, you're really getting a PCI Express to M.2 adapter and an M.2 SSD. If your motherboard happens to be on the bleeding edge and you have an M.2 slot, there is a version of this you can get that does not include the adapter. It's a slightly different model and you just get an M.2 SSD in that case. I would not recommend buying this with the intention of taking the M.2 card out of it because there's a warranty sticker there and it, and it will void, uh, void your warranty. Although I will tell you it's possible to remove the M.2 uh, card from the carrier without actually breaking the sticker. So if you're adventurous like me, it doesn't really matter. And you, you really probably don't want to avoid the warranty because this actually does come with a five-year warranty. Um, two Plexter-specific features that it advertises is true speed, sustained high-speed performance, and we do see that in the benchmarks, and true protect, unequaled security and data accuracy. Um, I asked for information about the type of flash that's being used uh, on this, and as of right now, I think it's the I think it's the uh, dual level cells. Uh, it's not the triple level cells from Toshiba. So it seems to be a pretty high end part. They've also set the mean time before failure at 2.4 million hours. So what should you expect from a PCI Express SSD? Well, it's it's really just like any other PCI Express expansion card. You plug it in, and it works. Now, when you do that, it doesn't show up in the BIOS. Uh, this card has its own BIOS that lets you boot from it, but it is UEFI and legacy BIOS compatible, so it should pretty much be transparent. Sometimes if you've uh, had any experience with like those add-in cards or like the add-in RAID cards, and it's like, you know, press control something to enter BIOS, it's a lot like that, except because this is a standalone drive, there's nothing to do, so it just quietly does whatever it needs to. It, it might, if you're not used to it, it might be a little alarming to you, if you go into BIOS and you don't see your hard drive, but that's completely normal and expected because this hard drive plugs directly into the PCI bus. So this is a PCIe Gen 2 uh, by two lane uh, interface card. Um, the 256 meg version has 512 megs of DDR3 and the 512 gig version has one gigabyte of DDR3. Uh, we're looking at the 256 gigabyte version um, today. The 256 gigabyte version also advertises up to 770 megabytes per second on the sequential read and up to 580 megabytes per second on the sequential write. Now with a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second um, card, you're right up against the 580 megabytes per second, 600 megabytes per second, something like that, theoretical limit on SATA 6. So this for the reads, just it goes a little over the theoretical maximum, but you're also losing, losing a little bit of the overhead of the SATA protocol and some of the other interface. And depending on the SATA implementation on the motherboard, you may actually have a faster connection uh, to begin with because there are some add-in controllers and some secondary controllers on motherboards that are only linked with a single PCI Express lane. So out the gate, this M.2 adapter gives you uh, two PCI Express lanes. The other thing that is uh, nice about this is that they advertise, you know, I mean, it's it's a storage device that you don't have to advertise Linux compatibility, but they advertise it's like, no, we've tested this with EXT2 and 3 and Riser FS. So that's worth something, I guess. You know, it does support Smart and Trim and NCQ and garbage collection and all that. All right, so the first benchmark I want to show you is this sort of a real-world NTFS file benchmark, courtesy of HD Tune Pro 5.5. Um, in this test, it's basically just a sequential uh, read-write test to a file. Um, the file length was uh, one gigabyte, uh, so we should exhaust the 512 megabytes of DDR3 cache that we have. And we can see if there's sort of any interesting pattern as, as it goes through. And then we did a, uh, a block test with a file length of 16 megabytes, and uh, we got some uh, tests on the 4K. So with the 4K random multi, the first thing that stands out to me is on the read, we got 94,557 items per second. Now this is with a file system underneath, so this is not raw access to the device. And our advertised speed was up to 105,000. So this is the right ballpark considering that you've got the file system overhead. For the writes, we've got 60,847. Now for us, it was advertised to be up to 100,000. That one is maybe a little low, but we're also dealing with NTFS. So that's probably about right. If we look down here at our transfer rate though, sequential read and write, you know, we're getting 679 megabytes per second and 559 on the right. That is definitely the right ballpark. 
Now for our next benchmark, I just decided to do the extra tests in the HD Titan Pro 5.5. And the one that stands out here is the Random Seek 8 megabytes in size. So we got 194 IOPS per second at an 8 megabyte per size, but our transfer rate was 786 megabytes per second. That's actually above spec. Um, that's pretty impressive. Um, we've also got some other um, benchmarks here. You know, it's, it pretty well keeps up it, in sequential outer, sequential middle, sequential inner. You would expect all those to be the same on an SSD, and they pretty much are. It's, it's you know, 461 to 497, and burst rate is uh, 471, which is not bad. Um, for a random seek with 64 kilobyte size, you know, we're getting 15,000 IOPS at the 64 kilobyte size, which is about 231 megabytes per second. That's really impressive. I mean, on a mechanical hard drive, this, that type of IO is going to crawl. You're going to be measuring the speed there in kilobytes per second. So that's actually pretty impressive for this drive. And here we have just the vanilla uh, read benchmark um, from HD Tune Pro. The minimum was 452 megabytes per second, the maximum was 522 megabytes per second, and the average was about 514. The burst rate was about 475, and the CPU usage was 2%. Now at the back of the card, we've got a red, green, and yellow LED. Um, the yellow LED is the activity indicator. Now if I had one complaint about this drive, it's that you can't attach your hard drive LED indicator directly to the card which would be nice. I mean, you, you've got a, an LED activity indicator on the front of your case. It would be nice to be able to plug that in to this card. A lot of enterprise cards have it. I'm used to seeing it on like SCSI controllers and things like that. This is enterprise-ish grade gear. I sort of, if there's an LED at the back, I would have expected that they provide a, uh, an, uh, a hard drive connector. So perhaps in a future revision of the uh, printed circuit board, they'll provide a, uh, an LED connector. But other than that, I mean, I, I really think that this is probably um, the future. I mean, on the Apple side, we've got Thunderbolt, which is basically a portable PCI Express interface. This is a direct PCI Express interface. You know, M.2, on the face of it, the, for the motherboards that have it, is just another form factor for PCI Express. M SATA that came before it, you know, you could have PCI Express and M SATA in the same connector, although electrically it was, you know, this is a SATA port wired in with the PCI Express port. So you could have a laptop that had a, PCI, a mini PCI Express slot that had no SATA capabilities and vice versa. And there were certain <laughs> there were certain SSDs that were PCI Express SSDs that would work even if there were no SATA signals present. So we're getting away from that finally and I hope that you know Intel doesn't have something crazy up its sleeve for you know next gen interface because really we just need direct to the bus storage devices. I mean Apple's already doing it with Thunderbolt. Why doesn't the rest of the world? Um, it makes sense to not have the overhead of an extra interface you don't need. I'm going to give this a thumbs up. This is a, this is a really nice high performance thing. And if you've got an M.2 slot, oh, you can just get the M.2 version and it'll be fine. Well, that's been the Plex Store M6E. If you guys have any questions or anything, check out the forum at techsyndicate.com. Until next time. <music>